it is, it is, as I say, a real privilege to um, come and tell you about Riding for the Disabled, or RDA, as we, um, it's often known as. It's not a very well-known charity, um, but it is a very, very important one. Some of the girls, I think, here from the senior school come over to our establishment in Southmore on a Saturday and help out uh, for their Duke of Edinburgh Award, which is it's great fun, and I think that, well, I'm hoping that they enjoy it. I think they do. There are many groups around the, throughout the country and indeed the, indeed the world. Recently, the Abingdon Group was twinned with RDA in Kenya because we have some helpers at the, at the Abingdon Group who are also very involved in the, in the work of the uh, RDA in Kenya. At the group, the, the, there are disabilities range from Down syndrome, spina bifida, cerebral palsy, cystic fibrosis, multiple sclerosis, muscular dystrophy, and spinal injuries, just to name but a few. There are many, many more different conditions and syndromes that we do come across. At RDA, we believe that both children and adults with disabilities can achieve great things, and perhaps that perhaps able-bodied people don't ever in their lifetime. The ability to sit up on a horse gives the rider a sense of freedom, independence, and also physiotherapy leaving wheelchairs, sticks and frames behind. Combined, these, also, these will benefit the rider's conditions. I want to tell you a story of a girl who came a few, some years ago now. She was a lovely girl, young teenager. She was hit on the back of the head by a snowball and suffered brain damage which was really, it was, it was most, it was very, very sad. And now I'm, I'm absolutely paranoid about my children throwing snowballs or anybody else. <coughs> but she came, she couldn't walk. She came to RDA and probably 18 months later, she could walk again. It was the most amazing testimony to RDA. I could tell you loads and keep you here all night to tell you about RDA. So I'd like to just tell you now a little bit about my story that, that, I, have, that I have experienced um, at RDA. I've been a member of the group for 39 years. In 1975, at the age of seven, after a chance meeting between my mother and Anne Barlow, now the chairman of the group, I joined the group as a rider at the local riding school, which was, based, which, which was the base for the newly formed RDA. This was the beginning of my love affair with horses. Little did I realise that riding would play a crucial part in my life, for physiotherapy, for improved coordination, and most importantly, for fun. I suffer from spina bifida. My family were not horse lovers. However, I was given the choice of riding or brownies. My sister chose brownies, but I chose riding. My whole family sacrificed so much of their time for me to do RDA, and even our holidays had to be booked around Saturdays when I was at RDA. For many years, I looked forward to my weekly lessons on a variety of horses and ponies. On a Friday evening before we left, I was allowed a special treat. I was allowed golden syrup sandwiches. It was a great, a great treat. I could, have, I could have golden syrup sandwiches in front of Blue Peter. I was never allowed to watch the television at need at the same time, really. During my lessons, the much-loved expression commonly used by other parents was heard echoing around the school. Your Anna's off, as I used to fall quite a number of times. Along the way, there were many experiences which were to play a huge part in my life. As a teenager, on Saturday mornings, my mother would drive me to Appleton at 7 o'clock in the morning so that I could get a lift to the stables. Then, at the age of 17, I reached a milestone. I passed my driving test and was able to drive myself, and I was not tied to one hour a week. I could go when I wanted to help out. There were many classes I could get involved with, and I could also carry on riding. In October 1980, 1989, a purpose-built centre in Southmore was built for the Abingdon Group, which was opened by Her Royal Highness Princess Anne. Sadly, the horses had no idea who she was since they played a very, very important part in this day with musical rides and demonstrations ridden by us as teenagers. My enthusiasm to help after work meant that my colleagues were given short shrift 
As when I said I couldn't wait and my duty as post lady at the end of the working day was often incomplete. Ten years ago, I became a group instructor, which gave me the opportunity to give back some of what I had learned over the preceding years. And in 2006, I became a trustee of the Abingdon Group. Now, this evening, I want to share just a few of my memories too. Falling off, I think you have to do this seven times before you become a proper rider. So I believe that I'm a rider a number of times over, since I spent a lot of the time on the floor. I remember being so disappointed at reaching the final selection trials, but not being part of the team of the first international dressage competition to be held in Sweden. But other memories, other rather nicer memories I have, are the riding holidays I used to go on, qualifying at regional dressage events, which ena that enabled me to compete at national level and to win national championships in 1981 and 1985. During that time, I learned so much and developed a passion for dressage, which I was able to pursue on a wonderful horse called Matty until 2003, when my first daughter was born. When I got married, my husband became a helper in the lessons I was teaching. Funny that. <laughs> he also became part of the carriage driving team at Met Weekly. Today, the Abingdon Group has in the region of 150 riders, 130 helpers and 12 horses and ponies of varying different sizes. In the week, during the week. The classes range from just one rider or an individual lesson to a class of six riders riding at one time. There are classes every day except Sunday, in the morning, preschool children and adults, and in the afternoons and evenings for the school-aged children or teena teenagers and adults as well. Now, why am I still part of RDA when I, now that I have a family of my own? Why am I still part of RDA when I can't ride myself now at the moment because of, of having had surgery that has prevented me from riding? Well, I'm still part of RDA because it's they who have shaped me into the person who I am. I have made lifelong friends in people and horses. It is a tremendous privilege to have met so many trainers, instructors, helpers and riders, not to mention the horses and ponies who have served and continue to serve faithfully without compa complaint. And it is an immense honour to be involved in such a thriving group, a place where I can still go and get exercise. I cannot l imagine life without it. Now, to end my talk, I just would like to show you a few clips uh, of it from a DVD that was made to, um, to take to places to, show, to talk and to show the public that what RDA Abingdon does for disabled children and adults. Thank you very much for listening.